Hey, welcome to my booth. I'm Jay. This is a continuation of this demo breakdown series of a longer video I have here. In this one, I'll be covering how to process your voiceovers in Reaper using Reaper's provided plugins. So anybody can do it. Let's dive in. And now what we'll do is fiddle with the audio a bit to clean it up. So for the sake of ease and brevity, I'm just gonna focus on this first ad that we recorded together. And this process, you would simply rinse and repeat and use for all the other ads that you've designated as candidates from your candidate script folder. So to begin with, uh, down here in our mixer tab, we're going to need to apply some effects to clean up our audio, throw some plugs on our track. Uh, if you don't have your mixer tab open, again, go up to view, mixer, it'll pull this open for you. And to pull open our effects on this track, we can click this little effects button here and it'll pull them open for us. If you don't like that button for some reason, it's also up here on your track and you can click that same button and it will pull it up. These two plugins here are paid plugins that I use because I like them. They work well for me, but I'm going to use for the sake of this video, the Reaper pre-supplied built-in plugins so that anybody can use it. And so what I'm gonna do is remove these, but for the sake of my sanity, being a individual with misophonia, so I don't have to listen to my own mouth clicks, I'm gonna keep the D clicker on here. If you're interested, I really do recommend getting the Isotope uh, RX repair suite. So to throw some plugins and effects here, we're gonna go down to our FX browser. If that's not visible to you, again, go view FX browser and you're on your way. Cocos is the tab we want. That's the Reaper built-in plugins. Cocos is the company that develops Reaper. And I have other videos going into greater depth on how I process my audio and how to use each of these different plugins in more depth. So I'll sort of do a survey and briefly talk through the settings. And if you're confused or want to go deeper, check out those other videos here on my channel. So to begin with, I'm going to apply a gate. This is here just to make my life a little bit easier, tame down the room tone a little bit and make things sound just generally cleaner. So I know from previous uh, settings that for me here in my booth, a threshold, which is when the gate is deciding to either open or close at whatever loudness we decide, that about minus 42 to minus 45 is good for me and my booth and the way I talk. So we'll check in here and see if that uh, setting works for us. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. Great. So the threshold looks like it's fairly solid. The next is the pre-open. What that does is it looks down the road and says, ah, there's some sound coming in about however long we set this. So it can be 100 milliseconds, 1 millisecond, no milliseconds. And it will open the gate preemptively before the sound even gets to us. This you can use or not, it's up to you and how you like the sound. Um, it can be helpful to play around with this. Attack is how quickly the gate opens. So either, either if we have determined a pre-opening spot or just when the sound hits us, this is how quickly the gate will swing open. For voiceover, usually pretty fast is good because for speech, we just start talking and all of a sudden there's sound. We don't usually glide into full volume. Hold is when the gates open and your audio gets quieter than your threshold, it will hold the door open, hold the gate open for however long you set. The value here is you can prevent yourself from either cutting off the ends of your sentences, or if there's a momentary dip in the middle of your talking where you do suddenly get quieter than your threshold, the gate will remain open and you won't end up with pumping artifacts. As an example, if I make my threshold a little too high and I play during this and I don't have a hold and I don't have a very fast release, which is how quickly the door will shut, the gate will shut, you may get some artifacts like this. My doctor recommended a Vita Fun Children where the gate's opening and closing, fluttering a fair amount. That's bad. So we're going to lower our threshold again and the hold will help us uh, to not get that sort of pumping artifact. 
The release, once the gate starts to close, this is how quickly it closes. A fast release, we're slamming the door shut. A slow release, the door is gently closing. I've found that for me and my voice and speech patterns, around 200 milliseconds to 250 milliseconds is pretty good. I can go slow or faster if I've got a hold on there, and if I don't have a hold, I'll make a longer release. So this is how it sounds when we've got all of our settings dialed in, just the gate. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. I sometimes... Great. Uh, next, we're going to add an EQ. This is not to make us sound better, sound like something that we're not, make ourselves really boomy. We're just going to use this to clean up our audio and make ourselves sound more like ourselves. The first and only thing that you really need to do, particularly if you're not terribly comfortable with vocal processing, you'll click on this first band, the type. We want a high pass filter and we'll click enable and it will look like this a high pass filter it cuts out any frequencies of sound that are below this so if i go higher it will cut out all of this and let these frequencies pass through i.e the frequencies that are higher than this filter are allowed to pass hence high pass uh, for most voices anywhere between 70 to 90 if you're a lower registered voice a typically male presenting voice 70 to 90 hertz is pretty safe. If you have a higher registered voice, a typically female presenting voice, you might be able to go higher, up to 120 hertz, or sometimes even up to 160 and above. What you want to listen for as you're dialing this in is when it starts to thin out your voice, you're cutting out or changing the way you sound, dial it back go a little bit lower. So as an extreme example, I'll let my voice over play. We'll slide this up and see where we end up. So let's give it a go. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. So you can hear how my voice gets incredibly thin when it's set this high. So we'll dial it back down until it feels like it's not really changing the way I sound very much. These kids are the Pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. I sometimes get away with hiding the occasional care. Great. So I'm going to leave it about there and call it a day. That's all you need to do. Uh, if you want to do more, here's one thing that I will offer you. If you want, we'll click on this second tab. We'll enable it so it turns on. And we're just going to use this to remove a bit of the muddy frequencies in our voice. In a lot of recording booths, voiceover booths, you can end up with resonance or amplifications of specific frequencies of sound. All very sciencey. All you really need to know is this. We're going to grab this node, pull it all the way up, make it a really loud. We're going to go down to bandwidth. We're going to pull it down to make it more sharp, like it's a needle or a very high peak. And now what we're going to do is play our audio, sweep back and forth a bit until we find sounds that we don't like. Right now, we're particularly hunting out for anything that sounds really boomy or boxy or something like this. Something that doesn't sound good. Let's give it a go. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. I sometimes get away with hiding the occasional carrot in a can. So I uh, am not a big fan of that sound. So what I'm going to do is then take my gain here. I'm going to drag it down to about minus 3 dB. In my philosophy on all of this is less is more. So be gentle with all of these things. Don't have really aggressive settings. And then we're going to widen out this Q a bit more so that it's nice and gentle and mitigating a lot of those boxy frequencies. So we'll do a quick before and after, see if you can hear the differences. Headphones are recommended for this. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. I sometimes get away with hiding the occasional carrot. So it's pretty darn subtle, but it helps a little bit, and it will help in particular when we're putting music underneath this. The next step for us is going to be to add a compressor. So we're going to go over here, grab Recomp, drag it, drop it. 
we'll set this back to the default. And the way that the compressor works, if we look at our audio here, it has dynamic range is what it's called. There's loud points right here. There's quiet bits over here. There's exceptionally quiet bits right here. And it's going to re reduce the dynamic range so that the louder bits sound about as loud as the quieter bits. The way we set this is we're going to pull the threshold down until we start to see a reduction here in this meter between minus one to minus three on average. And that's just a sort of rule of thumb that you can go off of if you don't want to be really fiddly with these different settings. It will be really important as you go through your different spots to adjust the compressor for each spot individually. The reason why is the dynamic range from spot to spot may change. So you may want to slightly adjust your threshold just so you're not ending up with a louder spot. So maybe you've got a spot that's, hey, come to this car place. And you've got another one that's a little bit quieter, a little bit more subtle. The differences in loudness between those two will be affected by the compressor. So you'll want to make adjustments as you go there. These settings, we're just gonna leave them as they are. Uh, and if you want to know how to manipulate this more concertedly or accurately, I have another video here on this channel going in depth on compressors. For now, we're just gonna set it. So again, I'm gonna play my audio, drag my threshold down until I get the sound I want. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. I sometimes get away with hiding the occasional carrot in a casserole that they'll actually eat, but that doesn't happen often. So in the louder sections, I'm getting a decent amount of reduction, and that's what I'm looking for. We'll skip ahead here, just double check it. They're gummy and delicious, and my kids just love them. Now, Cool. So we're going to leave it there, and that's it. Now, the effect from the compressor is it's essentially going to be turning down the volume on the loudest bits of our audio. So now we need to turn everything back up. The way we're going to do that is with a limiter. So we've got the re-limit over here. We're going to drag that in. And the way a limiter works is we'll set our ceiling, or the way some limiters work, and this one is one of those, we're going to set our ceiling, which is the loudness point that we want our audio to be at. Most voiceovers, you can safely set it at either minus 1 dB or minus 3 dB. The preference is yours. I'm going to set mine at minus 1 dB just for the sake of it. Click in this brick wall limiting, minus 1 dB. And same thing we just did with the compressor. We're going to play our audio, drag this threshold down until we start to hit... Uh, our ceiling here. You'll see the audio playing in this window as we go. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't getting the vitamins in their diet that they need. I sometimes get away with hiding the occasional care. Great. I like it there. I don't like to, I like to just barely nick the loudest peaks. I don't like to crunch the audio into the limiter, which will sound and look like this. These kids are the pickiest eaters. I'm worried my little ones aren't... I'm not a big fan of that sound, so I'm going to lower it a bit just so that I'm barely nicking the loudest peaks. Uh, that's my preference of sound. It's really up to you what you want. And that's all we're going to do to clean up our audio. Again, you'll want to adjust these from spot to spot. And as I go, sometimes I'll render out my spots to work on them individually. Additionally, you could do each of these in a separate track if you wish. Uh, so to render them out, if you want to go that way, we'll go to our region marker manager again. One more time. If you don't see it, view region marker manager. It'll pull this open. We can click on our Vita Fun. We'll pull open the render window, the hotkey for which is option command R. And to render out just this ad, we'll click on Bounds, Entire Project, Selected Regions. Make sure we're clicking on Vita Fun. Then we're going to Browse. This is where our audio is going to go at the end of our processing here. I'll go to my Renders thing. I've got a folder for all my renders. We'll go Demo, Tutorial, and we're going to throw it in there. Uh, sample Rate, we can leave it that. Uh, mono. Normalize Limit Fade, we'll touch on that in a bit. The name of our thing will go underscore, wildcard, project information, 
go down to region and this way it will name it demo redo underscore vitafun so when i render this out it will label it based off of what the information is here in reaper it's a very great way to save yourself some time and then for the primary output i'm just going to turn this to 192 kilobytes per second uh, you can choose any settings you want. You can render it into WAVE if you wish. I'm just gonna keep it at an MP3. I'm gonna click Save Settings and we can render this guy out for ourselves. And it will go just like that. I hope this was helpful for you. In the next series in this demo breakdown, we'll be covering where I like to find music to use, both in my voiceovers professionally, if a client says, hey Jay, can you throw music on this? I know where to go. And to build out my demos with some stuff for a affordable and or free price. Uh, until then, be well. Toodles. <laughs>